but that's just me. Uh, our next speaker is Thomas Cholokov, N1SPY. Uh, he is 12 years old from Pembroke Pines, Florida. Now, um, Thomas has spoken at two of my youth forums at, at Hamcation in Orlando, Florida. And the last one that he did in February, I told him to think of as a dress rehearsal for today. He will share with us some electronic projects that are good for young hams. These are all projects that he has done and that have helped him to learn more about the principles of electronics. Thomas is interested in helping young people develop an interest in radio and electronics. He got his extra class license at 11 and does various projects from chasing satellite signals to building antennas. He records his projects in video and shares them with friends. Some of his other interests are mathematics, playing the trombone, video games, and swimming. And as a result of his presentation in Orlando, uh, several people did contact, I'm sure both him and me as well, about some of the projects that he described, teachers who found it useful in classroom settings, as well as grandkids and uh, other young hams who benefited from uh, what he did present. So, Thomas, N1SPY. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and listen to all of our presentations. So today, I'm going to be presenting about electronics projects for young hams. Before I get started, I just wanted to say a few words about myself. I'm 12 years old, and my radio call is November 1 Sierra Papa Yankee, and one SPY, number one spy, whatever you want to call it. And I was a licensed operator since 2015, and I am currently extra class. I love everything from electronics to video games and anything like circuits or anything that glows in the darks, beeps, or glows. So uh, one of the first projects that I did was actually one of the most complex projects that I've ever done, and it was creating a whisper beacon. This whisper beacon was, uh, came from a kit, and I had to wind my own toroids and solder everything, which was really hard because I am a lefty. And the project took me over three months, but the signal from the beacon was received all over the world. We went all the way from Australia to Europe, and it used less power than a light bulb. Uh, our beacon used a fourth of a watt, while a light bulb generally uses like one watt. And of course, the project was a success. I learned about soldering, using a multimeter, dividing my work into small steps, and a lot of others. And I documented my work with videos, so you can check it out if you want to. That, those are just a couple of pictures of me using the multimeter, a picture of the low-pass filter, um, a picture of the finished beacon, a screen that we attached to the beacon, and the map of the stations that we were able to uh, connect to. One of the next projects that I did was about a rabbit ear antenna communication with satellites. While looking through some old junk in the garage, I found a weird kind of TV antenna. It was a rabbit ear antenna, so I went up to my dad and asked him what the heck this was. And so after like two, two hours of explaining, I decided to modify the antenna into a V-dipole. And we were able to receive NOAA satellite weather pictures. And then later, I remeasured the antenna to receive SSTV from the International Space Station. 
which was very interesting. And it was actually a very simple project and it was fun too. It was also a great time to try and explain to my friends and family and they were very interested in the projects. So here we have a picture of the antenna and below it we have a picture that we received and it is actually about the 20th anniversary of the RS service. One of the next projects that I did was a Nixie tube clock. At last year's Hamcation, I picked up a circuit board and a guy said that it belonged to a clock controller. And I did a bit of research and I found out that this board was actually part of a Nixie tube clock. So I ordered Nixie tubes all the way from Russia and I loaded the firmware in the clock controller and I sold it and I sold her the used Nixie tubes in, in place. The Nixie tubes are actually really old. They were from the Cold War time and the circuit board was fairly new. And surprisingly it lit up and it looked amazing on top of our old Collins S line. It was one piece of Cold War tech reunited with another. So the top picture is a picture of the Nixie tubes and below is the Nixie tube clock on top of our Collins radio. One of the next projects that I did was a homemade loop antenna. So during this year's Hamcation, I went and I picked up a, vari a variable capacitor, it was about this big, and with some work, I used it to make a magnetic loop antenna. And I learned how antennas resonate and how even a QRP radio can put so much power into an antenna and be able to send a signal all the way to Europe. And I learned that you can make projects with just simple garage items. We used a few zip ties, an old team op, the stand for the team op, a variable capacitor. We used actually some refrigerator copper wire. And we also used a coat hanger. So it was a very simple project used from very simple materials, but of course it worked effectively. And one other thing is why these projects interest me. Of course, I love electronics and it's just an extremely interesting topic. I love things that click, beep, or glow in the dark. And I love sitting at a table with some hot chocolate or some coffee, uh, soldering iron and some circuit diagrams. And I learn something new with each project and the thrill of learning, the thrill of turning an idea into a finished project is just very amazing. And I, and I get that with every project I do. So how do you get others involved? So to get involved, you need to find a nice, exciting project, projects. There are lots and lots of those. You can use the ones that I've done or you can find them online. And the book, to the, the book on the, on the right is one of the books I use to gain a better understanding of easy electronics. And you can use those to build on them and to make some of the projects that I've done. And many places sell hands-on kits for beginners. And you can also make your own experiments too. So the summary, electronics projects are fun to do, they're a great interest, and it's just an amazing topic. You can see more of my projects, that is a Facebook page that goes into more detail about them. Or you can also visit my QRZ page, my call sign is easy to remember, N1SPY. With each new project, I learn something new, and I hope to keep this up for a very long time, and I hope to do many more projects and get my friends involved. Thank you so much for listening, and 73 from Thomas, N1SPY. And as a teacher, I cannot help making evaluations. <laughs> But the progress that this young man has made since I first met you two years ago, when, when he was at two of my different uh, forums, is amazing. So that's uh, certainly something to be said about ha giving these young people an opportunity to get up here. Just tremendous uh, improvement on your speaking ability. That's just terrific. Now. Remember I told you at the beginning that if you don't say out loud 